Hello everyone and welcome to my channel RPG Retro Reviews. I'm Captain Courageous and I review old school modules and games, reveal fascinating trivia, and do my best to give them a fun and informative analysis. First of all, to all of you out there, I hope you are doing well and staying safe during this time of crisis. As it turns out for me with my DJ business, things are kind of shut down until further notice here in Maryland, so I guess I'll be using my free time to make some videos. Feeling brave tonight? How brave? Brave enough to do battle with hideous monsters? Hmm? Brave enough to sneak around dank castles in the dark and chance being the next victim of a dragon strike? Dragon Strike was released in 1993, TSR's attempt to package Dungeons & Dragons, the role-playing game, as a playable board game. It came with two double-sided map boards, 30 hero spell cards, 10 Terrapta spell cards, 38 magical treasure cards, 12 trap cards, 10 monster cards, 5 sneak attack cards, 5 reference cards, 6 hero cards, a Dungeon Master map booklet, the instruction booklet, the adventure booklet, 24 plastic, Figures depicting the monsters and heroes in the game, a really cool looking Dungeon Master screen, 24 plastic clips, 22 plastic bases, 43 cardboard markers, 3 polyhedral dice, and of course the infamous VHS tape. Needless to say, there were a lot of components in this box, and it retailed for only $34.99 US, which considering the contents was pretty reasonable. I remember back in the day buying this game simply for the value of the cool plastic miniatures. This is hardly TSR's first foray in attempting to turn Dungeons & Dragons into a board game. In 1991, TSR had released the new easy-to-master Dungeons & Dragons game, which came with a cool poster map dungeon and a bunch of cardboard stand-ups. A year later, in 1992, TSR released Dragon Quest, which was more of a board game format than an RPG. Most of TSR's efforts here were dictated by Milton Bradley's own Hero Quest board game, which was released in 1990 in collaboration with Games Workshop. Like Dragon Strike, I purchased Hero Quest specifically for the really cool miniatures that came with it as well as that furniture. HeroQuest's game mechanics were a lot more gamey than Dragon Strikes were. It was very much a board game first with some minor role-playing elements. You even had to roll dice to move in HeroQuest, which I always thought was kind of silly. Dragon Strike's mechanics are a lot more robust than HeroQuest's in almost every respect. Each character has a set movement rate. The character cards provide a nice core mechanic to allow for a lot of imaginative actions by the players in the form of the feats system. The three polyhedral dice the game comes with are the 8, 10, and 12-sided die. This provides the range and skill level for different feats and attacks in the game. The higher the dice the character has for a particular skill, the better their chance of success. Every character has dice assigned to their attack, save versus magic, find disarm tracks, find secret passages, feat of dexterity, and feat of strength. The player tells the Dragon Master, which is Dragon Strike's version of the Dungeon Master, what they want to do, rolls the appropriate die, and if the result is six or better, they succeed. The game provides a whole list of uses for feats for dexterity and strength, and then goes on to say that those are only suggestions and encourages players to come up with their own uses of those skills. In addition to a surprisingly flexible task resolution system, the game also lists Question a Monster as one of the possible actions a hero can take on their turn. In order to successfully complete many of the quests in the game, the heroes will have to talk to the monsters and interact with them in ways other than combat. The Dragon Master is given instructions on taking the role of monsters, and the quest lists specifically what the monsters will say to certain questions. In addition, since the players can ask anything, the Dragon Master is encouraged to make it up and improvise in those cases. 
In my opinion, this aspect of gameplay greatly elevates Dragon Strike over other similar D&D-esque style board games, not only as a great intro to role-playing games, but just in the quality of the gameplay itself. Furthermore, the game is very robust in the number of spells available to the spellcasters in the party, with a total of 30 spells broken down as 10 per levels 1 through 3. Compare this to HeroQuest's 12 total spells. The wizard gets to pick 4 first level spells, 3 second level spells, and 2 third level spells. The elf can choose 2 first level spells and 1 second level spell. While similar to HeroQuest in the number of spells that can be cast during the game, it's the variety of spells that are available that distinguishes Dragon Strike over its competitor. Gameplay tasks in Dragon Strike are resolved simply enough with a skill roll of the indicated die rolling a difficulty number of 6 or higher for success. Attacks resolve similarly, but the difficulty number is the opponent's armor class. A successful attack usually removes one hit point from the creature, with most creatures having only one or two hit points. Tough creatures had much higher values such as the dragon that had eight. Accounting tasks are handled via a somewhat clumsy but functional clip system. The clips seem to be cut-up report folder spines. One has to wonder if TSR had a side business going on there. Another cool aspect of Dragon Strike were the two double-sided printed game boards depicting a wilderness area, a town setting, a castle, and a cave network. This greatly added to the number and variety of locations, actually allowing the heroes to travel overland to get to the dungeon as part of a quest. Finally, let's look at the VHS tape. This really isn't needed or required to play the game. The video is a dramatic recreation of one of the final adventures, the Sunstone, and it varies in several places from the board game. For one thing, the dramatic recreation includes a cleric, that doesn't come along in the quest, but helps out in the beginning. Who dares disturb my banquet? It appears to be a wizard. No question about it. He's a wizard. Refrain from disturbing his personal effects, thief. At least until he's dead. I was only checking his identity. Stand aside! We will know all about him if he lives. If he dies, it won't matter who he was. It's not a knife. There's a tooth. A tooth freshly ripped from the jaws of a dragon. Summon all your life force! Face the death out from your bones. Let life flow. Forge yourself anew! He lives! This video also includes some weird sections as well. The elf acting very animal-like, for example. Why is he doing that? Stop your petty human bickering. Our cause will serve the good of nature. The only way that goodness will be served. <laughs> And there are monsters depicted, not included, an owlbear and a minotaur. Also, the defeat of the man-scorpion in the video is kind of lame, in that a dexterity check is used to make the man-scorpion sting himself, and then he dies from his own poison.
Great, I got a defective wand. I'll throw a spell. Which one? Hold person. Drazu. The spell takes effect. It's as if he's working in slow motion. I'll grab a stinger and try and stab him with it. Roll the die. He's dead, killed by his own poison. However, at the end of the dramatic presentation, there are some valuable tips provided to the player taking the role of the Dragon Master. Note, however, the part where the narrator talks about how the Dragon Master can win the game. Are you sure nobody's listening at the door? At the window? Very well. Then we can proceed. As you've just seen, the Dragon Strike game is unlike any game you've ever played before. In what other game can you visit the nastiest castles in the world and bring your friends along for the ride? The key is that all the players must work together as a team in order to win. And you, as the Dragon Master, must make the world unfold before their very eyes. Your role is all important. You set the stage for the players, presenting the quest they must follow. Only you know where the treasure is buried. Only you know where the clues are hidden. And only you know where the dangers lie. Now don't forget, a great Dragon Master isn't afraid to ham it up. Sure, the monsters just want to beat the heroes up, but it's a lot more fun when they do it with style. Rise up, Fire Elemental. Use your rage to engulf my enemies. The game rules and adventure cards will give you tips about what the monster might say. The rest of the time, just make it up. Follow the game's guidelines about how smart the monster is and what motivates him, and have fun with it. I'm walled in here! The instructions will tell you that the dwarf is telling the truth. And when the chips are down, he'll help the party. A dragon master can win the game if the players make bad moves, move too slowly, or don't act together as a team. To make the game more challenging for the heroes, you get to set some of the traps at the start of each adventure. But that doesn't mean you can cheat or ignore the rules. For example, if a monster is about to die, resist the temptation to save it. In fact, there's really only one rule to being a great dragon master. The real object of the game is for everybody to have fun. And if the game isn't fair, nobody will. Now you have all the secret knowledge you need. Honestly, I really like this section of the video. It actually encourages role-playing on the part of the Dragon Master, and given the robust nature of the game system, this seems like not just a really great introduction to role-playing games, but a great game in and of itself. How else might you, as a D&D &D player, get those friends and relatives involved in the experience if they are not up to the task or dedicated to the time to learning how to play an actual game of Dungeons & Dragons? If you watch the video in its entirety, it is actually a pretty decent instructional video on how to play the game, but nothing in the marketing for the game actually mentions this. Perhaps mentioning that it's a helpful instructional video filmed in hyper-reality would have been something to put somewhere on the box or in the marketing literature. That so much effort went into the production and promotion of the game and the video that its actual use in the game is not mentioned anywhere is an abysmal failure on the part of TSR's marketing department. Even if you read the actual instructions for the game, the point of the video is muddled at best when it says, Tip, play the videotape before you read further. You don't need the tape to learn these rules, but by watching, you see many of the dangers and thrills that heroes face during a Dragon Strike game. What does that mean exactly? Obviously, if you've laid out $35 for the game already to get to this point, 
and have the game boards, the miniatures of monsters and heroes, you probably know this is an adventure game that involves fighting monsters. How about noting that the end of the video has useful advice for the player taking on the role of the Dragon Master. That actual gameplay will be presented in the video to help in learning the rules. I could go on and on here, but I think you get the idea. They just spent how much money to make this video? Why is it here? What does it do? Unfortunately, this game did not catch on the way that games like HeroQuest did, and certainly at $35, the game's price point and profitability were factors in its failure. However, once again, here is a prime example of TSR actually doing well with producing a quality game but failing to market it effectively. I can only imagine the frustration of creators at TSR at this time working so hard to make something so good only to have it fail due to poor marketing. Clearly the cost of making the VHS tape alone had a significant expense to the overall production. And like the CD in the first Quest game that would be produced three years later, it's completely superfluous to the product it's included in. A lot of marketing effort was placed on selling this game with the VHS tape filmed in hyper-reality. Indeed, by 1993 standards, the mingling of live action with computer-generated sets was cutting edge. But its mismatch with the game's components and gameplay might add to the confusion to those watching the video and expecting a similar experience at the table. Not to mention, it's just a little cheesy as Gall Get Out and certainly off-putting to certain players who might have enjoyed the game but were completely uninterested in the tape itself because the marketing doesn't explain the purpose of the video to begin with. Furthermore, the art on the box is clearly stock art that TSR had that does not match the actual gameplay at all. There are no horses or knights clashing in the game. Even the dragon in the logo is stock art from the Jeff Easley art from the box of the Easy to Master Dungeons and Dragons game released a few years early and this sort of thing detracts greatly from the product. Furthermore, the rules set the Dragon Master as a player of the game attempting to win rather than just a referee attempting to provide their friends with a good time. This is a conflict in tone right in the rules which will require role-playing interaction to be successful. Why not just go all the way and make the Dragon Master a referee of the rules and a creator of game scenarios as in a regular RPG? Finally, the heroes in the game do not get to keep the treasures they find in the dungeon from scenario to scenario. Each adventure starts with the heroes drawing a set number of treasure cards from the treasure deck at random depending on the difficulty of the adventure. There is also no way to progress or move up in power level, which is a real shame as that would have added an additional role-playing element to the game. Thus, the conflict in both marketing and tone in regards to gameplay doomed Dragon Strike to the dustbin of history. There were no follow-up expansion boxes as there were in HeroQuest and essentially marked another TSR misstep. Not because they made a bad game, but because TSR couldn't coordinate its efforts with its marketing department. While the failure of Dragon Strike did not doom TSR, its failure was certainly indicative of the management issues at the company that would, in a few years, lead to its demise. However, like many such things, Dragon Strike has developed a cult following on its own, and since it is long out of print, getting your hands on this game can be a challenge. There are no PDFs of the rules in adventure books commercially available, and of course the box sets on Amazon and eBay vary in price from reasonable to prohibitively expensive. You can get an incomplete game reasonably for around $40, but complete games can go for much, much more. My advice here is to grab a game that's in decent shape that may be missing a few components and then buy the missing pieces separately. The miniatures themselves sell individually on eBay and price-wise are quite reasonable. The dragon's wing had a tendency to break off if not handled carefully. But a bit of green stuff and crazy glue can remedy this problem easily enough. Most do not include the VHS tape, but really, who has a working VCR player these days? As of right now, the entirety of the VHS tape is available on YouTube, so check the card in the corner if you'd like to watch it. Get some friends together. It's a good time. 
So let's go ahead and take a look at Dragon Strike on my D20 rating system of style, presentation, and value. Style-wise, this game has it in spades and more. It's slick. The components are top-notch. It's a quality production all around. It looks cool to play, and if run well by a competent Dragon Master, is a lot of fun. The miniatures are of high enough quality that they could be painted, though the gargoyles are a bit lame-looking. The Dragon Master screen, once again, had excellent artwork on the player-facing side and depicts some monsters from the game menacingly peering over castle battlements. Not all of the miniatures are great, however. The troll is a little bit lame. The dragon's wing had a tendency to break off easily, as did the legs of the man scorpion. And the gargoyle is barely more distinctive than a lump of gray plastic. I'll give the game a 16 here. Presentation is a mixed bag. The rule system is tight, flexible, easy to understand, plays quickly, and is a great introduction to role-playing to the uninitiated, or even a great diversion for a regular group of role-players looking for something to play when everyone in the group can't get together. It suffers from inconsistencies in tone and presentation, placing the Dragon Master in the role of both referee and player, which potentially can lead to conflicts of interest during actual play. The VHS tape is completely non-essential to the game itself and is simply a marketing ploy that didn't work well and, in my opinion, had the opposite effect of pushing players away from the game rather than drawing them to it. So I'll give it a 14. Finally, let's look at value. Really, this thing is packed with components. Its original retail price of $34.99 was a great deal at the time. And even if you went on to play D&D, the boards, the miniatures, would definitely be useful. And with a little cut-and-paste project, even the Dragon Master screen would be great to use in a D&D game. Even today, you can pick this game up at a fairly reasonable cost, though to get a complete game without paying through the nose, you might have to piecemeal your purchase. So I'll rate it an 18 and that brings the overall rating of the Dragon Strike board game to a 16. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you found this video informative and useful. My TJ business is pretty much brought to non-existent due to the pandemic. So you will certainly see a big spike in content over the next several weeks as I'm basically working from home at this point. If you could please help out the channel by sharing whenever you can. And if you decide to make a purchase on something I've discussed, please use the links to DriveThruRPG and Amazon in the description boxes below, as I am an affiliate of both of them now. I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreons who have been very generous by supporting me. And finally, please subscribe and click the little bell so you can get notifications when I upload more content. Like, comment, and share. Join the RPG Retro Review Facebook group and consider supporting the channel by becoming a Patreon. As always, my friends, may your D20 roll true and game on.